Hey guys, it's Vasya here again and today we will be solving Vangelis the bed pair and the bubbles challenge which is the third problem of the contest IEEE Extreme 11. Okay, so this is an easy problem so let's get right into it. Uh, we won't be reading this text, uh, let me tell you what uh, we should do. The problem is given a graph, uh, an undirected graph of n nodes which is maximum 1000 and uh, maximum 10,000 edges. All we need to do is check whether the graph contains loops or no. So basically cycles, either loops or cycles. Uh, it's almost the same. Uh, let's talk about it. So here's an example of a graph that does contain a cycle. So here's one cycle, here's another cycle, 0 to 1, 0, 3, 1, etc. There are many cycles here. So in this case we need to print one and for the second test case uh, as you can see, this graph does not contain any cycles, so we need to print zero. Okay, uh, what we need to note is this line here, there can be multiple edges or self loops. In this case, we consider the graph to contain a loop. Now, after reading the problem carefully and reading the questions and answers from the CS Academy and IEEE Extreme team, uh, what I determined is that no, the graph does not contain multiple edges, but it can contain self loops. Self loop means that there can be an edge uh, going from a node to itself, for example, from 0 to 0 or from 3, 3 to 3. And in this case, we automatically need to print a 1, which means that we have a loop. Okay, so let's start. Oh, no, before we start coding, uh, let's discuss it a bit. So, how do we find if a graph has loops? Well, there's a more difficult approach and an easier approach. The more difficult approach is to use uh, uh, cycle finding algorithms like uh, modified depth first searches, etc. So we will need to start from some node and go around until we meet a node that we have already visited, blah, blah, blah. That is a pretty complicated uh, problem for, for this uh, task. Uh, there's no need for that. If the graph was directed, then we would have to use something like this. But in our case, because the gra graph is undirected, there's a much simpler solution. So basically, uh, let's talk about trees for a second. What is a tree? Well, a tree is a graph that doesn't contain any loops. What, is, uh, uh, what are trees known for? Well, a tree of n nodes has n minus 1 edges, exactly. So uh, this is a tree, for example. You can see that it has 6 nodes and one, two, three, four, five edges, exactly. Six minus one is five, right? So how do we know if a graph has a cycle? Well, if the number of edges is greater than or equal to the number of nodes, then we definitely have a cycle. So if you try to, edge, to add an edge anywhere here in this graph, it will contain a cycle, okay? All we need to do is check for this. Count the number of nodes in the graph and count the number of edges then check the formula. So if the number of edges is greater than or equal to the number of nodes, then we know we have a cycle. Okay, uh, there is a slight complication here in that uh, the graph may not be connected, so there can be multiple components. So we need to do this for each of those components. For example, this all of this can be one, one graph. And we need to check if this guy here contains a loop and if this guy here contains a loop. If any of those contains a loop, then we need to print a 1, which means that the whole graph contains a loop. Okay, well, that's it. Very simple. Uh, how are we going to do this? Well, we are going to uh, paint the graph. It's called painting. Uh, we'll be counting all the components. So each component will be uh, painted in a separate color. For, for example, this will be painted in color 1, this will be painted in color 2. So this way we will know to check for each component the number of nodes and edges separately. All right, let's do this. Okay, so first the input. The input says, the input says there's a number T, which is number of test cases, N, M, A, and B, all right? So in T, in N, M, a, B. Okay, we read T, then while there are more test cases, read N and M. Then M is the number of edges, so we create over those. 
and we read two integers a and b. Now we need to create a graph. We will store the graph as a adjacency list, basically a vector, an array of vectors. So graph of uh, how many nodes we have, XN, which is 1000. I'll just put 1001 here just in case. Okay. Now, when we add a node, we say graph of A push back B. So we add that connection because it's undirected. We need to add the opposite connection as well. Okay, that's done. Um, we need to check if the if the graph contains loops, which means if A is equal to B, then we have a loop. As loop is equal to true. All right. Now, after this loop is done, if as loop print one and continue. Okay. What we need to note is that for each test case, we will be creating a new graph, and this graph could be already filled. So we need to clear the data basically. So I'll just create a function here. Clean up. Okay. And I will be iterating over all of these nodes and clearing up the vector. Okay, now we also need to know the color of each node. So color, what else we need? We need for each component to know the number of edges uh, and nodes. Okay, so int uh, nodes per component. Edges per component. We also need to clear these arrays each time uh, we start a new test case. So I'll just say color, oh, sorry, memset color. Uh, colors will be zero initially, and uh, for each new component, I will start from one and go forward one, two, three, etc. Uh, color. Okay. We need to do this for the other arrays, nodes per component. And edges per component. Okay, so we cleared up everything. Now we need to paint the graph initially, all right? So uh, paint graph. And we need to pass the number of nodes we have because that so that variable is not global. So paint graph and then how do we paint the graph? Well, uh, we need to know the next color. So I'll just say here in next or no, we'll add like a component count. Component count. Oh, we'll set the component count to zero initially, and uh, okay. So for iterate over all nodes. Okay, uh, if the node is already painted, we need to continue. We don't care about it. If color of i is not equal to zero, simply continue. Otherwise, we have found a new component, which means we need to increment the component count. And we need to paint that node. Okay, uh, what we need to do is now do a simple bread first search to color all the nodes that this node is connected to. So uh, how do we do that? We do it with a queue. We push the node i in the queue and we do a simple bread first search. Q.empty uh, node is equal to the front pop it out and uh, now we trade over all of the nodes all of the neighbors of node j is equal to zero j less than graph of node size j plus plus and uh, v or yeah v equals graph of node j if it's already colored we don't care so if color of v is not equal to zero, simply continue. Otherwise, we color it and push it to Q. 
color of v is equal to component count because that's our current color and uh, we push it to q okay now um, after we painted the graph we can uh, count the number of nodes each uh, component has we can do that here um, so sorry and uh, nodes per component of color i plus plus that's it so now we have the uh, now we know how many nodes each component has now we need to find how many edges each component has okay how do we do that well uh, we, we will simply iterate all the edges so iterate each node and its edges I always call, call my nodes U or V for convenience. Okay. Um, we don't want to count uh, the edges twice. For example, if there's a no, node, uh, if there's an edge AB, we do not want to count it as AB and BA because it will mess up our formula. So what we can do is create a set of pairs. Uh, called scene for example and uh, if scene dot find pair uh, which nodes are these i and i is the first node and v is the second node if it is equal to if it's not equal to scene dot end so basically if it exists or the other way around so the pair vi exists. Then we have seen this edge and we want to continue. Otherwise, we need to add that edge to scene. Uh, insert, make pair i, v, and also vi. Okay. Uh, now we have an edge. Uh, if we come here, we, we know we have an edge we haven't seen, so we need to count it. Uh, we know the color of the component. We know we are in the same component because I and uh, V are connected, and that means they're in the same component. So in C, that is the color, is color of, for example, I, doesn't matter, we can put V there. And we need to count, the, we need to add increment the edges for that component. So edges per component of C, plus plus that's it we counted the edges for each component now we have the edges and we have the nodes what we can do is iterate all components sorry your components start from one uh, number of components component count okay and uh, if number of edges oh sorry edges per component of that component is greater than or equal to nodes per component for that component, we know we have a loop. So has loop is equal to true. Now, if has loop, print one, else print zero. And we're done. Okay, so I noticed that we have made two small bugs, which we need to fix. There are really small bugs, but okay. We created a function uh, cleanup and we never called it, so cleanup. And also, we missed an exclamation mark here. It should be bread for searches. While Q is not empty, not while Q is empty, because it will never enter this loop otherwise, because we already have something in the queue. All right, so let's test our example. And one zero, which is correct. Let's see. Now compile again. Run examples. 
OK, submit. Voila, 100%. Well, that's it. Uh, that was the problem. Vangelis, the bed pair and the bubbles challenge, the third problem from the IEEE Extreme Challenge. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.